Hello everybody, my name is Joshua Hall. I'm based out of the University of Bristol in the United Kingdom and I'd like to use this presentation to share with you some initial work we've performed looking into the characterization of helicopter maneuvers within ADSB trajectories sourced from the Open Sky Network. I'd like to start this presentation by providing a justification for gathering helicopter flight maneuver statistics in the context of fatigue design. I'll then present the opportunities and challenges that ADSB trajectories provide us in generating these statistics and also present the algorithms that we've developed uh, to achieve this. We'll then apply these rule based algorithms to a set of ADSB trajectories for a, a fleet of training helicopters and then discuss how the potential utility of these statistics and ADSB trajectories can help us in the future. I'll then close out by discussing the limitations of the current approach and ongoing ADSB enabled research at the University of Bristol. In the aerospace sector, helicopters represent the most varied missions and maneuver types that we experience. And this means we see a, a significant amount of variability in the flight maneuvers that helicopters perform. And this can be as a result of mission variability, operator variability, or even just flight to flight variability for the same helicopter type and the same operator. Now, many helicopter components are exposed to significant cyclic loads during their life, and therefore fatigue design is a fundamental part of helicopter development. Now, because of all this variability that we see in helicopter operations, we are often reliant on standardized usage spectra that describe the maneuvers our helicopters perform. And an example of this is the Helix Felix uh, spectra for rotor blades. Now, what we need is, is significant amounts of in-service data to help us validate these assumed design spectra, but also update them to make them more representative for future design cases. The increasing and mandated use of ADSB transponders means that helicopter trajectories are now appearing more commonly across uh, various ADSB databases, including the Open Sky Network. And we see the opportunity of using these trajectories to help us develop that in-service data to help us validate and update design fatigue spectra. Now, there are some opportunities or benefits that ADSB trajectories offer us over traditional loads monitoring campaigns. Firstly, they provide us a remote and real-time monitoring across helicopter fleets. Normally, we're relying on instrumenting a few dedicated airframes. We can now look across the fleet. It also means we don't have to interrupt the operation of the helicopter in order to download flight data. And also within the helicopter community, large uh, transport helicopters often have their own dedicated health and usage monitoring systems. However, smaller rotorcraft, such as small training helicopters or light utility helicopters, do not have such systems. And therefore, ADSB trajectories may offer us an opportunity to gather this data without relying on a HUM system. There are, of course, some challenges of identifying helicopter maneuvers within ADSB trajectories. Firstly, ADSB trajectories only provide track information and not the helicopter heading. Therefore, we need to try and find ways to identify sideways and rearwards flight within helicopters uh, with the limited data that ADSB trajectories can provide. Also, ADSB coverage requires line of sight and helicopters tend to operate at lower altitudes. So we may find we are missing some key maneuvers. We also need a set of maneuver characterization algorithms that can help us identify the maneuvers in the trajectory. We want to be able to turn that 3D trajectory into a classified and labeled flight track as shown on the left hand side, which gives us the maneuvers and when they occur. And that's the initial investigation we want to present today. Forward flight maneuvers can be characterized in the same way as many previous studies, where we're looking for changes in trajectory speed, track and altitude on a point by point basis. And these are known as rule based approaches where we develop thresholds on the trajectory parameters to identify whether a maneuver occurs. We then build up maneuver blocks by finding similar and consecutive point by point characterizations. So for turns, we can look at a change in track. For climbing descent, we're looking for a change in altitude and a non zero vertical speed. And acceleration deceleration maneuvers are found by a change in ground speed. Now, to build up those thresholds for the rule based approach, we looked at the trajectories we were working with and found areas where the uh, helicopter was expected to be operating in a, a straight and level flight phase. Uh, and therefore, we could find the typical deviations in, in the trajectory parameters that would highlight that a maneuver had occurred. So therefore, we needed to see a turn angle in excess of 20 degrees to identify a turn 
uh, climbing descents were characterized by a positive or negative uh, vertical speed, along with a set altitude change, and also similar conditions are put on a speed change as well for acceleration, deceleration maneuvers. There are some helicopter specific maneuvers, such as quick stop, where the helicopter is brought from cruise to a near hover condition, and therefore we could add additional thresholds on there in terms of the entry speed and also the deceleration rate. Now the other thing we can do is cascade these uh, conditions onto one another. So for example, we could then characterize turns and identify whether they had any climbing or, or accelerating elements to them. And likewise for climbs, we could identify if there was any acceleration being performed as well. Let's turn our attention towards hover maneuvers. We identified that below ground speeds of about five knots or 2.5 meters per second, we would see clustering of trajectory points very close to one another as shown on the screen. And we wanted to use these to help us identify where hover maneuvers and locations may be occurring. Now in flight training, a typical requirement is to keep the helicopter within two rotor diameters during the hover. So therefore we use this as a criteria to cluster together uh, trajectory points to form this hover location that we could then mark out in the trajectory. It's observed that sometimes we'd see a hover location, then a short transition of flight, and then another hover location. So what we could do is look through the trajectory and, and find out the number of trajectory points that were within two rotor diameters for each trajectory point, and the peaks of this response would, would represent the center of each hover location, which we could then segregate into two separate hover points. Now, the track between these two hover locations could enable us to provide an estimate of whether the helicopter was performing forwards flight, rearwards flight, or sideways flight uh, between the two hover locations. Also, if we had an isolated hover location by itself, we could then look at the change in track from the helicopter going into the hover to the helicopter leaving the hover to estimate whether a pivot turn had occurred, i.e. an on-spot turn, or whether the helicopter was just in a normal stationary hover. Another helicopter specific maneuver that's very important from a fatigue design standpoint is the auto rotation. And this is the maneuver that's performed in response to a simulated or, or real powertrain failure in the helicopter. Now the aim of the auto rotation is to recover the helicopter safely to the ground uh, whilst maintaining rotor speed. And this is, this is therefore characterized by very high descent rates, typically in excess of 1500 feet per minute. Now, from a fatigue standpoint, auto rotations are really important because they represent a complete load reversal on the rotor blades. And also during the recovery, the helicopter can perform additional turns, which represent control reversals. So therefore, there's a lot of interest in identifying auto rotation maneuvers within flight trajectories. Algorithms were then applied to a set of ADS-B trajectories that were representative of a specific twin seat training helicopter. We used the Open Sky database to find uh, the airframes within this fleet that gave us reliable and consistent ADSB trajectories, and this resulted in nine airframes being selected. We then, uh, using the Impala shell, downloaded the trajectories for these nine airframes across the period of a year. Then used a five minute flight separation condition to uh, find the individual flights within these trajectories and then reviewed each individual flight to make sure there weren't any gaps and that each trajectory had a clear start and end point. Using these conditions, we had to reject 30% of the flights, uh, leaving us with 2,300 flights across the nine airframes. Our first task was to consider what flights types were being performed by the helicopter. And we used the criteria of start and end points being greater than 10 kilometers apart to identify cross country flights. And all flights that started and finished at the same location were considered training flights and any flights that also contained auto rotation maneuvers were also considered training flights. And unsurprisingly, we can see that our selected helicopter is performing predominantly training flights. We applied the maneuver characterization algorithms to each trajectory to identify the number of uh, maneuvers and, and some additional statistics about them that were occurring. Uh, and we could then compare these back to those standardized helix felix uh, rotor spectra and we selected the training spectra because it's most reflective of the data set we're looking at. It's also important to note that it's, it's typically expected that training usage spectra for helicopters are the most fatigue critical usage spectra. Unfortunately, I don't have time to present all the statistics we've generated, but they are presented in the paper. 
So my aim is to try and show you some key results that can help us discuss how ADS-B trajectories can be useful for constructing helicopter usage spectra. So what's shown on the screen at the moment is the histogram of the number of turns per flight identified across the 2,300 flights. And we see that the mode is just below 20. Now this is significantly lower than what's currently assumed within the helix and felix uh, spectra. However, you see from the histogram there is significant variability uh, with some flights performing as many as 100 turns. Now, I talked earlier about using the cascade of the rule-based algorithms to characterize maneuvers in detail. And what we can see in the pie chart is the wide range of different turning maneuvers that occur, turns with climb elements, turns with acceleration elements, etc. Now, in existing spectra, we tend to assume that all turns are performed in a stable manner, i.e. constant speed and constant altitude. So therefore, hopefully this is showing how ADS-B trajectories could be used to enhance the different types of maneuvers that we include within our design usage spectra. And we could also incorporate them in the appropriate proportions that we see from in-service data. If we then look at climbing maneuvers, we can see that the occurrence of climbing maneuvers is, is in pretty good agreement between the in-service data and the helix spectra. Now, when we review the helix spectra, we can see that it's assumed that every climbing maneuver that is performed is a maximum power climb, i.e. max performance. And this infers that the cyclic loads applied to the helicopter in climbs are, could be larger at these maximum powers. However, when we develop statistics from every climb maneuver that we observe in the trajectory, we can see that the climb rate and the climb entry speed show significant variability. And this infers that maximum power climbs won't be being performed at every occurrence, and therefore the cyclic loads from climbs may actually be lower uh, in service. So therefore we may be able to use such data to help us reduce the conservatism that we may currently see within our assumed design spectra. If we look at the maneuvers where the helicopter was performing straight and level flight, we can also consider some interesting trends in the cruise speed. The histogram on the left shows a bimodal response. We see a peak at 75 knots and another peak at approximately 10 knots. And this shows that the helicopter operates in predominantly two regimes, a cruise regime and a slow flight regime. And we see this repeated again during turns. And this will again enable us to build up future spectra to represent this behavior, the fact that we need to see cruising at both a, a higher speed and this slow flight region. Let's consider hover maneuvers. The pie chart on the left shows the occurrence of flights with and without hover maneuvers. Now, as we'll all expect, every helicopter flight should have two hover maneuvers where the helicopter takes off and the helicopter lands again. So it's very clear from this pie chart that we are not capturing all of the hover maneuvers that occur within the trajectories. Now, first point of this is that we're probably losing uh, helicopter trajectory coverage at low altitude, and therefore that's why we'll be missing these uh, departure and arrival hover maneuvers. If we then drill into the characterization of those hover maneuvers, we can see that the slight majority are pivot turns where the helicopter turns on the spot, uh, with the next greater proportion being stationary hovers with very few forward and sideways and rearwards transitions. Now, this is in contradiction to what's currently assumed in the helix spectra, uh, and therefore future focus must really be placed on uh, better characterization of maneuvers in the hover. However, we have had much greater success in characterization of auto rotation maneuvers. The histogram on the left hand side shows the occurrence of auto rotation maneuvers per flight. And we can see that the mode value is in good agreement with both the helix and felix spectra. However, what is very clear from the histogram is the significant amount of variability in the number of auto rotation maneuvers per flight, with some flights performing as many as 27 auto rotations. As I highlighted previously, uh, auto rotation maneuvers are very important in the context of fatigue design for helicopters. Uh, and therefore, this is very important information that we could incorporate into future spectra. Now, if we break down the turns performed during the auto rotation recoveries in the trajectories, we can see that the vast majority are straight ahead recoveries. Now, if we look back into the 
uh, fatigue critical case of the S turn where the controls are reversed during the uh, auto rotation recovery, we can see these only occur in less than 5% of auto rotations. Now in the helix spectra, uh, the justification for, for including um, auto rotation maneuvers in that spectra explicitly stated that uh, control reversal or S turn auto rotation maneuvers were not put into the spectra as they were believed not to be representative of in-service operation. So therefore we can see that the trajectory processing we've performed provides some validation of that assumption. Beyond just the pure statistics we've presented so far, I hope it's been clear to see that there is some real potential usage of ADSB trajectories for developing and validating helicopter usage spectra. We've seen that we can enhance the spectra detail by more detailed characterization of maneuver types and, and speeds. We can validate existing assumptions from in-service data, as we saw with the auto rotation case. And also we can use it to reduce conservatism in our future spectra, which would hopefully enable us to produce uh, more efficient components that still retain their structural integrity in service. Now, a common question that comes up when dealing with in-service monitoring is, well, can we actually use this approach to monitor individual airframes? So we compared each of the helicopters uh, to each other and the fleet wide level for each of the statistics we considered. And as we can see on screen at the moment, we can see that helicopter A and helicopter B perform significantly more uh, cross country flights than training flights when compared to the fleet level statistics. Now, as we highlighted earlier, training usage spectra are typically considered the most severe usage spectra from a fatigue design standpoint. And this therefore infers that helicopter A and helicopter B are exposed to a less severe usage spectra in service compared to the fleet. On the other hand, if we consider auto rotation maneuvers, we observe that helicopter C uh, performs about 15% more flights that contain at least one auto rotation maneuver. So therefore helicopter C is exposed to a more severe usage spectra. So therefore, ADSB trajectories could provide an initial way of monitoring helicopter maneuvers to identify those helicopters that are exposed to a more severe or less severe usage spectra and provides a route to health and usage monitoring. We've all seen some limitations of using ADSB trajectories for identifying helicopter flight maneuvers. We've already discussed the fact that there's reduced maneuver coverage at low altitude. Uh, although in the future this is expected to become less of an issue as ADSB coverage increases and the fact that we can combine uh, open sky trajectories with other ADSB sources that do provide low altitude coverage. Also the lack of heading information uh, is a real challenge for classifying hover maneuvers uh, and we're currently working on other characteristics of the trajectory that we can use to identify maneuvers occurring within hover phases. And then finally, with the trajectories that we've been working with, we don't know the maneuvers that's occurred in them a priori. So therefore we need a, a verification route for this approach. We could, for example, synthesize ADSB trajectories from flight simulation, uh, where we fly the maneuvers and then generate the data. And this could be a really powerful way to prototype uh, characterization algorithms in the future. We could either combine cockpit video recording and associated trajectories, or even script flights of an ADSB equipped helicopter in order to verify the algorithms. In terms of ongoing work at the University of Bristol in this area, we of course need to perform sensitivity analysis of the thresholds we currently use in the rule-based algorithms, and we also need to carry out those verification activities that I discussed on the last slide. Looking slightly further ahead, there's a lot of interest in trying to use ADSB data for characterizing helicopter missions, for example, search and rescue, and also being able to compare the usage spectra for different helicopter mission types. We're also carrying on with our work in terms of uh, characterizing landing gear uh, usage spectra using ADSB trajectories as well. Uh, later in this conference, some colleagues of mine from Bristol will also be presenting the use of mode S data for turbulence prediction. I hope in this presentation I've demonstrated that ADSB trajectories provide a route to validating, updating, and introducing more detail into helicopter usage spectra. I also hope I've highlighted that there's potential for these tra trajectories to be used on the monitoring of individual flight maneuvers for specific helicopter airframes. However, I'm really keen to stress that this represents a first step in characterizing helicopter flight maneuvers in ADSB trajectories, and there's a lot of work required in terms of enhanced maneuver characterization algorithms and also verification activities. So I'd just like to thank my co-authors at Bristol for supporting this work and also all of you involved with the Open Sky Network for making research like this possible.
And finally, I'd like to thank you all for your attention for, in this presentation, and I look forward to discussing this work with you all more in the future. Thank you very much.